I feel like the point that I'm about to make is something that every leftist should be able to agree with. So I'd really like it if you could just focus on the words coming out of my mouth and not on the identity of the Twitter account that I'm about to show on screen. Because every single time, every single time I criticize this guy's awful takes on Twitter, people are like, oh, I, uh, Sean is okay. And true, Sean's videos are okay. You know, the videos he makes are okay. And nothing else. What's something true but controversial that if you say it, you'll piss off a lot of political people? Donald Trump was a pretty average president. Let's continue. Like he's a dreadful person. That's nice. But I don't think he did anything all that out of the ordinary would compare it to his recent peers. But he tried to cheat an election. But he's corrupt. But he's racist. But he got a lot of people killed. And then here's his counterargument to these positions. Hmm. Hmm. Now, the nice thing about Sean is that if you challenge him on this, he'll loftily call you a debate bro and not actually clarify his arguments. What did he say before this? He made a comment some months ago that liberals would try to rehabilitate Donald Trump after his presidency ended too. But I gave the correct take, actually. The first people to rehabilitate Trump would be the lefties. Because liberals hate Trump. Lefties, on the other hand, spent the past four years distinguishing themselves from liberals by pretending Trump isn't as bad as he actually was. Let me explain, okay? So, what makes Trump an especially bad president? So, economically, pretty much nothing. The deregulation, the taxes, that's all pretty above board. Uh, the foreign policy, nothing, really. Uh, Donald Trump was pretty bad foreign policy-wise. I mean, the retraction from the Iranian nuclear accords, the, um, the, the ramping up in tensions around the world, the, um, the pulling out of the Rojavan region, leaving our Kurdish allies to die, stuff like that, you know. Uh, he ramped up drone strikes. It was bad, yeah, but not, like, exceptionally bad. The two main things that made Donald Trump exceptionally bad, I mean, really, really, really bad, were... A, his normalization of anti-democratic rhetoric, that's one, and B, his weaponization of the Republican Party against the institutions meant to facilitate the continued democratic process. That's the main thing. The Republican Party now lives in a completely different universe, you see. Now, I was pretty young back during the Bush years, but I remember uh, pre-Tea Party um, Republicans, you know, the, the, you know, the, the Tea Party, you know, the little group they had for a while. And I remember what it was like before then. And Republicans were pretty insane back then. That, that, that was still the case, you know, that hadn't changed. But, and I mean this really, really sincerely, okay? They did believe in something. There was something Republicans believed in back then. Now, I didn't like the things they believed in, you know, the things they believed in were principally pretty negative, but <laughs> they did believe in something. They did have some kind of external reality they orbited around, you know, it wasn't consistent, but it was something. And you could talk with them about that. They were neoconservatives for the most part, and neoconservatives do have material goals in the material world, goals that are oriented around an actual if not understanding, then at least acknowledgement of things that are really happening. But that's not how the modern Republican Party works. The modern Republican Party is explicitly anti-reality. They will adopt mutually contradicting positions at the same time. It wasn't always like this. It wasn't always this bad, you know? Don't let, like, the modern world, like, blind you to how things used to be different. There was always an element of this, and it's been getting worse for a while, but it is at its worst now. Just this complete cognitive dissonance, you know, um, that makes it really difficult to even move over Republicans. What can you do to move over Republicans? Like, like, think about it for a second. Is there, like, a policy you could convince a Republican to move over, like, for? Like, they're at the point now where, like, vaccines have microchips, and the new world order is being brought about by, like, they're so far beyond all the adrenochrome stuff, the fact that Alex Jones' rhetoric is kind of mainstream in the Republican Party now, and the flagrant disregard for our democratic processes. Not that Americans' democracy has ever been great, but it's been, at times, functional, you know, in its own terrible way, but less so now, you know? 
like with Mitch McConnell, for example, a lot of our government kind of only functions because of gentlemen's agreements, you know, the idea that everyone's acting in good faith, but that doesn't really happen anymore. So now it's just this really frustrating process of watching Republicans openly not give a shit about democracy and Democrats not realizing that. So they try to reach out and act bipartisan and nothing happens because Republicans don't care. They'll just say things that they don't, they don't care, you know? And right now we have this big wave of anti-CRT, critical race theory bills, being passed in a bunch of red states. And by the way, very few of those bills actually mention critical race theory. They get pushed under the guise of opposing critical race theory. In reality, they're mostly about preventing teachers from being able to talk about certain issues, like, for example, framing America in a critical light, calling America racist, that kind of stuff, you know? But they don't even bother. A lot of them don't even mention CRT in the text of the bill. A majority of them don't. So what I'm saying is everything is getting a little bit more flagrant. Everything is moving a little bit faster. And that's bad. That's really bad. I don't know how a person can say Donald Trump wasn't an exceptionally bad president when he orchestrated an attack on the Capitol, which was designed to kill elected officials. And then the Republican Party defended him. First, they said it was Antifa. That was the first one. They said it was Antifa because they needed a second to gather their talking points. And now, actually, they were kind of patriots, you know? You have Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates trying to go into the local jail cell to check on the condition of the uh, Capitol rioters. You have the woman who died at the Capitol riot being uh, martyred as some kind of hero, you know? Uh, you have the police officers who defended the Capitol building being slandered. Like, Tucker Carlson calls them weak pussies, they're lying about this. And it's like, wow, this is a really comprehensive attack on all the institutions that kept the Republican Party from getting away with a wide-scale assassination. This is a pretty consistent, you know? Like, what happens next time, man? Maybe next time they don't fail. Maybe next time they come with more people and they kill, like, what? Half a dozen Democratic representatives? Is that just, like, par for the course? Like, do, is the, do we, like, cross our arms smugly and go, like, ah, yeah, well, of course. This is common Republican behavior. This is standard American presidential behavior. Like, no, of course not. It's okay to acknowledge that things have gotten worse. The problem with Sean, there are a lot of problems with him. But one of the main problems with him and a lot of other lefties online is, um, is that they're more concerned with distinguishing themselves from liberals than they are actually affecting leftism. The greatest enemy of leftists has always been fascism. Always. That's our biggest enemy. I hope you all know that. Liberal democracy is something that we want to change. It is something we want to improve. Fascism is and always will be infinitely worse. Undeniably, there's no getting around that. That's a fact, okay? And by every empirical measure, the prominence and power of fascist rhetoric in this country is ramping up significantly, and that is something that should be taken seriously. But I see the Chapo Trap House episodes, and you know what they do? They basically just make fun of liberals for being concerned over the stuff Republicans do. That's what Sean does as well, you know? Because they have to distinguish themselves from being liberals. It's like an aesthetic front, you know? Now, people do call me a liberal, and usually these are people who are very mad they can't beat me in a debate, but oftentimes this is just because I have the audacity to point out that Trump is a far worse president than Biden will be. Trump was a worse president than Biden will be. But that's really, I, is that not the main reason I'm called a liberal? Biden better than Trump? I mean, really? Seriously. That's the threshold? That's the line? That or me not buying into Russia Today talking points, I guess. I mean, that's those are the thresholds of liberalism. You know? It can be very, very frustrating. Creating an identity by rejecting others that are creating something. Yeah, you know who else did this? The communists back in Germany did this as well. They drastically underestimated the threat of the Nazi party, and they were completely unwilling to work with the uh, Social Democrats. And then, of course, some people say, you know, of course the Social Democrats killed them. They executed some of their leaders. And while the truth to that is a lot more complicated, and this usually gets distilled into a few talking points that, uh, you know, uh, people use to beat sock dems over the head or whatever, the fact remains this, okay? Siding with the Social Democrats in Germany would have been better than letting the Nazis win. Does anyone disagree with that? I'm not saying the democratic institution is good, because I don't believe that it is, but I'd rather survive with them than have us all die to Nazis or 
whatever brand of fascism is on the rise these days. And I don't think that should be a controversial opinion, you know? But some people really think it is. It's this obsession with, with aesthetically distinguishing yourself from liberalism that permeates almost every level of leftism. Because leftism, let's be real, to a lot of people online, is cool because it's contrarian, you know? They probably grew up with democratic parents, left-leaning a little, but not too much. And, oh, ah, how cucked their parents are, liking Obama, liking Hillary Clinton, my God. But they, they know better. They know that actually it's all bullshit. Politics is bullshit. Liberals is bullshit. Republicans is bullshit, but the liberals are too hysterical when they complain about Republicans. It's all bullshit. So to them, leftism is not so much like a consistent and coherent set of principles designed to maximize the positive outcomes that we believe in, which involve not only the positive advocacy for positions we care about, but the negative advocacy against fascism. It's just like a cool contrarian thing that makes them really stand out against the liberal masses. And that shit really bothers me, you know? Just an aesthetic. So much with these people. And then the infighting, cl the, the collapsing, on and on and on. Uh, and we get nothing done. I'm going to say it. Obama was comparatively good. Compared to Trump? Sure. Compared to Biden? Has yet to be C. Biden could end up being better than Trump. I st or Sorry, better than uh, Obama. I still don't think that Biden's good. But I can engage in these comparative metrics without, like, uh, you know freaking out and treating everything like it's an extension of my personal virtue. One real problem of Weimar Germany was that the elites in industry, media, uh, military nobility betrayed the government institutions and then filled them. That is still dissimilar to the United States. That is true. And I want you to reflect on that for a second. What forestalls the prominence of fascism in America? Well, in large part, it's because we have prominent political, economic, and cultural institutions which don't benefit from the existence of fascism. Media is meant to appeal to the broadest possible swath of people. That's how they make their money. That's why Marvel movies all sound the same, okay? They want to appeal to as many people as possible. And progressives are more uh, populous than reactionaries in this country. Anti-fascists more populous than fascists. So media will appeal to the majority. Same with a lot of economic incentives. And take a look at what happened recently with the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. You know, the person who dissuaded or pushed back against Trump using the military against BLM protesters? It turns out that guy, actually kind of reasonable. The guy who defended critical race theory to Matt Gates, You know, the guy who has since been smeared by the entire Republican establishment. You know, the general. It turns out that guy actually pushed back against Trump from behind the scenes quite a bit, potentially saving quite a few lives. Now, what would have happened if that guy was a Trump stooge? Okay, maybe things would have been a bit worse. Sure, you know. All right, fine. But not terrible. I mean, it wouldn't have been that much worse, right? Okay. What if a few more of the judges who were overseeing the cases concerning election fraud, they had sided with Trump? Okay. Oh, well, that actually would have been really bad. That would have legitimized quite a few of their concerns and it would have had to have been taken to a higher court. Did you want that going up to the Supreme Court? The 6-3 conservative Supreme Court? No? No, me either. I certainly did not. What if Republicans had the House at any point during all of this? What if they had a stronger majority over the Senate? What if, what if this, what if that, what if this? There are so many tiny fail-safes in our system which work together but can be overridden with enough time and persistence, a, a party that does not care about political fairness will eventually worm their way past all of them, as long as they're given enough time and have enough power. The Republican Party has enough power to do this. They just need time. They need to be excised before they can do that. They need to be made politically irrelevant. And we are not going to accomplish that goal if we sit around pretending that Donald Trump was just a run-of-the-mill president. What are you accomplishing by pretending this, by the way? I think a lot of people, they think like, oh, this will mean people will look at Biden and see him for his flaws. Do you really think liberals are moved over to the left when they hear lefties say stuff like Trump was average? Is that really the impression you think liberals get? No, you're completely insulated from them. You're, you're in a bubble of lefty groupthink. Makes us look like lunatics. Are you kidding me? We're supposed to be the farthest left people and we're downplaying how dangerous fascists are? Jesus.
Yeah, we're little, in little bubbles right here. Like, come on. Liberals aren't going to be moved over in this. All you get is your lefty circle jerk. Everyone comes on your face. It's a lot of fun, et cetera, et cetera. And, and we get nothing. Republicans in the House could refuse to certify the 2024 election results. There's almost no end to the ways in which a bad faith political party can obliterate the process if they have enough prominence to do so. And right now they're gerrymandering and setting up uh, barriers to voting pretty liberally in uh, counties and states all over the country, which will make it easier for them to compound upon their uh, current uh, biases here. Are you shitting on Twitter, Sean, again? I just got here. No, 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 not Sean. We're shitting on the abstract problems I have with general online lefty. Because every time I talk about this, people zoom in. They're like, but Sean does good videos. And yes, he does. Excuse me. Vosh, do you think if they held the House in 2020, they would have refused to certify the election? Donald Trump publicly shamed Mike Pence for his role in the certification of the election, which is something that he had no choice in. Donald Trump threw Mike Pence under the bus because he was unable to affect the certification of the election results in a situation where Mike Pence had literally no control over the outcome. You think they wouldn't use the methods they actually could get outcomes from? Donald Trump sent people to the, the, the Capitol building saying they wanted Pence hanged. You think they won't do anything? They'll do anything. Assume that all, Rep I mean, for the purposes of our democracy, assume that the Republican Party is as malicious as a political party can be, that there is no sense of decency, good faith uh, in them, that they might as well be like evil, like a cult or like evil aliens trying to weaken the country before the, they ar arrive in a high fleet and destroy. Just assume infinite malice because that's how they act with a few exceptions, like Cheney, for example. Still hate her, still voted like 95% of the way with Trump, but at least she acknowledged somewhere in whatever she has instead of a heart, she thought, oh yeah, maybe like an actual fascist coup would be bad. I guess that's something, you know? I guess that's something. So how do we as good faith lefties who want to survive prevent them from exercising that malice? Well, as frustrating as it may be, we really just need to make sure there are enough Democrats acting aggressively enough in most of these political positions that Republicans can't gain a foothold, okay? Uh, we can work within the Democratic Party and we can expand our influence within them. That's good and should always be done. But, like, here, here's the thing, okay? A ton of lefties got really mad at AOC for donating leftover campaign money to moderate Democrats fighting in purple districts. like. They got mad, AOC took the leftover money and put it towards the goal of keeping Republicans from winning over moderate Democrats in purple districts. Are you insane? What is AOC supposed to do in Congress if she doesn't have a Democratic majority? What can she do? You just want her to virtue signal, that's what you want. This is what I mean. There are some Democrats whose hatred of liberalism is so substantial that they, it's not even like, it's not even like a, a tactical consideration anymore. They just despise the liberals. E even if it means letting fascism win, they just despise the liberals and that's it. That's all they care about. I would get mad if she donated against progressives, but she donated against Republicans, so it's fine. Yeah, it's not like she was like finding key primary races between progressives and moderates and then like favoring the moderates. It was already known which Democratic candidate would go up against the Republicans. She just put money into them, you know? It's good the military is largely pro-Democrat because the German fascists had big support in the Weimar military? Yes, that is true. Our military is not explicitly super right-wing. And neither is the leadership of our military. That's good. That is good. Same with our intelligence agencies. They act with... Th their primary political interest seems to be the defense of the country, uh, or, it, or that and the adherence to whatever orders they're given, more so than, like, undermining the existing system in favor of a given political party, you know? Republicans try to claim that uh, the FBI is, like, anti-Republican. Republicans just commit a lot of crimes, so it just happens. Yeah. Could always be worse. What do we do if Republicans win these next elections, though? I'll, I'll update you with time, okay? I'll, 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 I'll keep coming at you, you know? I feel like some Twitter leftists are actually against winning because that means they can't dunk on the current system anymore. 
Yeah, I don't know. Well, isn't that what Chapo Trap House wanted to begin with? They expected Hillary to win, and they wanted to just make fun of Hillary for four years, to be like the only political podcast tackling Hillary from the left or whatever. But then Trump won, and their hearts just weren't in it, because they just wanted to, like, distinguish themselves from liberals. Like, all right. Now, that's unfair. For a while, their hearts were in it. There was, for a time, an enthusiastic opposition to republicanism from Chapo Trap House. But after Bernie Sanders got kicked out of the primary, after Super Tuesday, nah. Nah. Their hatred of the Democratic Party superseded anything else they believed in, and it all turned into the same. Did I read New Yorker's article on them? It's really good. No, I have not. I think you're a bit harsh on them. Amber especially is pretty on point. Bosh, I really appreciate your willingness to burn bridges to say stuff like this. Actually, they should talk to me before I ever shit talk them. Again, other lefties hate me because... I'm willing to say Biden is better than Trump. They hate me for this, you know? They despise me for this. So one time, one of them, I don't know, Matt, was making fun of me, uh, saying I was like an, a moron or whatever. And um, then he woefully misrepresented, I think it was anarchist politics? I, it was something. He woefully misrepresented something. Yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily remember. I honestly, I have very little respect for a lot of other people in the online left. I feel like I've been given many opportunities for all of them to independently disappoint me. Not that my opinion on them is like God's word or anything. If you like them, that's fine. You have every right to go ahead and like them. They literally said Chomsky was a liberal for saying Biden is better than Trump. Oh yeah, yeah, they did do that. Yeah, the whole, an oh yeah, the anti-Chomsky thing. That's right. Um, yeah. Uh, just very little respect for types like that, you know. I, you know, I really didn't think that of all the things to alienate you from the rest of the online left, it would be me thinking that Biden is better than Trump. To me, the, the idea that that was like the line that led to so many people like despising me is so, so, so crazy to me, you know? I feel like they're such children, you know? Like, just grow up. Jesus. Like, it's just really obvious stuff. It's just a lot of them are so wounded after Bernie lost the primaries. And yeah, it sucked, but like, Man, no offense to you guys, too, but when Bernie lost the primary, I kind of expected it. Like, yeah, he was always the underdog. And then the next day, I say, yeah, we got to vote for Biden then. You know, whoever, if, if it's not going to be Bernie, it's got to be Biden over Trump, yeah. And people got mad at me. Got really mad at me for this. I know it sucks. Bernie Sanders is really old. There will be opportunities in the future for there to be big left leaders we can fall behind. But for right now, better not fascism than fascism. Everyone was so sure he was going to win after Nevada, Vosh. Yeah. Look, Nevada was great and all, but... I mean, that was never a guarantee, you know? Vosh, you say all this, but the Dems are not even fighting back at all, so do they get paid off or what? No. The problem with Democrats is that they're liberals, okay? Yeah, they're shit at fighting back. So, pack the seats with so many of them that they don't even need to fight back. They don't need to be effective at fighting fascism if Republicans make up one-third of the House and Senate. Then it doesn't matter anymore. Just think of them like a big, dumb wall between us and fascism, okay? Don't think of them as, like, big tactical fighters that are working, like, to the best of their extent to better the country. Just think of them as barriers that we erect between ourselves and a death camp, okay? That's all. Just think of it as that, okay? I'm like, we should b build this wall. We should make, we should build this wall. And then people are like, but that wall won't turn into a Mecca and go and defeat Republicans with its brick limbs. And I say, no, it won't. It's just a wall. It's just a meat shield. But that's what it's supposed to be. And you're like, but what about the Mecca? Like, okay. Big wall. Big wall, you know? Yeah, they're like the walnuts from Plants vs. Zombies. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. You know what I mean. The point is to make Republicans irrelevant so the main discourse is between moderate and progressive Dems. I've said this before. The average liberal is not going to give a fuck about leftists' concerns uh, uh, on the world. Like, we, we, they're, like they're not going to care about our perspective on the world as long as Republicans pose a viable threat. If Republicans don't pose a viable threat anymore, then you have the ability to convince them of much more radical propositions. I saw this recently, true. Hold on. No, nah, I don't want to go into it. If I get back on Twitter, I'll get mad again. There was recently some tweet about, like, Biden doing a bad thing, and it turns out that was a misrepresentation of what Biden did. It was some 
it was some tweet talking about how Biden had expedited the deportation of people applying for asylum status, which was kind of a lie. It was a, it was a, a speeding up of everyone's processing through the asylum status. So people getting accepted and people getting deported. So that's actually a good thing. Do you want the process to be like slow? I mean, I, I would prefer more of them get accepted, but the, the expedition of the process is almost objectively a good thing. But anyway, of course, whatever, lefty misinfo, whatever. And people in the comment section uh, of that, none of them were like, wow, Biden's really bad. Don't liberals see Bernie would have been better? You know what they were saying? They were like, wow, can't believe people told me I should vote for this guy. They were complaining about Bernie or Busters. None of them even care about leveraging Biden's failures, or alleged failures in this case, purported failures, as a way of moving liberals left. They just want to bitch about people who weren't Bernie or Busters, you know? Like, what, what the fuck? They just want to complain. You fucking whiners. It's just hard to trust the libs. Don't trust the libs! Trust reality, okay? Libs will disadvantage us. Republicans will have us thrown in black sites. Jesus, did you see what was happening during the BLM protests under Trump? Barr wanted to go in with literal soldiers? Uh, they were black-bagging protesters, taking their info and then dumping them on random sidewalks? Is that the direction you want to head down? Like that's, that's the, I don't don't trust the Democrats. Okay, the Democrats are shiftless and worthless. Okay, trust the Republicans who will consistently kill you. Okay, trust them. Trust them to be bad. Dems are inconsistently bad.